So in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at a basic example of scraping a web page using Node.js and a couple of associated libraries. And the tutorial will be broken down into three parts. The first part, we're actually going to retrieve the contents of a URL. So the HTML content that's sat at a particular address, we're actually going to download that so we can examine it. And then in the second section, we'll have a look at how you can parse the content and actually pick out some of that data using a Node library called Node HTML Parser. And in the third section, we'll look at how to deal with dynamic dynamically generated content, say for example if you've got a React or an Angular website where most of the content is actually generated with JavaScript, we'll look at how you can actually render a page first using a library called Puppeteer and then we'll be able to actually do the same thing again and extract any of the data that's been presented on that particular page that's generated. So I'm going to take you step by step installing each of those libraries and then how you would use them to actually download a web page and extract its contents. And by the end of the tutorial you should have the basics of being able to scrape a web page using Node.js and apply it to any web page that you want to actually extract data from. So let's get started. So we're going to be looking at some of the different techniques that we can use to scrape data from a web page. But first of all, we need some web content to actually scrape. So I'm just going to create a simple file that we're going to serve up, which will be our source for all of our web scraping tasks. So here in Visual Studio Code, I'm just going to create a new file and I'm just going to call this index.html which will hold some new HTML content for us. And I'm going to purposefully keep this pretty simple just so that we can see exactly what's on the page so that we're not working with a complicated document and trying to work out where all the bits and pieces go. So I'm just going to put a heading level one tag there and inside a P tag, I'm going to put some lorem ipsum text inside there. And let's actually just copy that a couple of times as well. And I'm also going to put an image. So let's put a placeholder image inside of there. And then we'll just put a few more paragraph tags in there as well, again with some lorem ipsum text. And we'll just leave it as that at the moment. Now in order to examine the page, we could just open this up in our browser, but because we're going to be making network requests as if you were scraping a real website, we're going to want to actually serve this content on a local server. So let's first of all set up our project. We'll create a new package.json file. And then what we'll do is we'll install a package called Light Server, which is essentially just a HTTP server, a local server running on your computer. There are loads of these different types of packages available through NPM, so if you've got a preferred one, you can actually use that instead. And once that's installed, if we go over to our package.json file, and in our scripts, what we'll do is we'll actually create a new script in there to run that light server for us. So we'll just create a new script called serve, and then we'll just run that light server and we'll pass in index.html so that opens up automatically. So now in our terminal, if we say npm run serve, it'll run that command. And the web page that we've got looks a little bit like this. So this is the test content that we're going to be scraping and you can see the URL is just localhost with the port number on the end. And you can see all of the elements that we added into our document. So with our test document set up, let's take a look at part one of this tutorial, which is actually getting the content from an external server using Node.js. So the first thing we're going to do is install another dependency in our project and the dependency is Axios, uh, which we're going to use to actually make network requests to actually retrieve the web page that we've just created from our local server. Next, I'm just going to create a new file that will hold our JavaScript code and I'll just call this pagescrape.js. And inside of here, I'm just going to require the Axios dependency so that we can use that within our code. And I'll just open up a new block of code here. I'll make it asynchronous so that we can use the await keyword inside of here, but I'll just create an iffy so this will run as soon as the page scrape file is loaded. So in order to retrieve the contents of the page that we just created, we can use the axios.get function to actually send a network request to download the page that we've just served up on our local host. And using the await keyword, we can store the result of that into a variable called page. If we just log that result that Axios gives us back to the console to take a look at what we've got and run our script from the terminal. So we do get that HTML content back in the response that we have, but the Axios function actually returns us a complete object with lots of other information as well. And the HTML content that we're actually after is in a property called data. So we probably just want to extract that data property and save that so that we can use it to extract our web content.
So now our data variable just has the HTML content that has been retrieved via the Axios get request. But it is just a string, we can't actually do anything with it in terms of selecting elements. For example, we can't use a query selector or a get element by ID function to actually extract any of the parts of that document. So this is where the node HTML parser library comes in, and we're actually going to install this as another dependency of the project, and this will give us those facilities, those functions, to actually use the query selector and other similar DOM functions on top of that data that we've just retrieved with Axios. Do all that now with npm install node HTML parser. And we just need to require one function from that library, and that function is called parse. So I'll just destructure it from the require statement here. So what we can do now is actually construct something which is a bit like a DOM in the browser. So we'll say parse the data using that parse function that we've just imported. And let's say we wanted to get the contents of the heading that's inside of that document. So we could say, create a new variable called heading, and from our DOM object that we've just created, as you can see, it's got a lot of the methods that you might be familiar with when you're working inside of the browser. And we can just inside of there say query selector, and we'll just select the H1 tag that's inside of that document. And then let's just log out its text to the console. So let's run our script again. And now you can see in the output in the console, we're getting the value that's inside of the H1 tag. Let's just double check that in our index page. So you can see those match here and we're actually accessing this element from the page from our constructed DOM which is created from the node HTML parser library. So you might not be able to do everything that you would normally do in the browser with our backend DOM object, but you can do most things that you might need to do in terms of grabbing data for web scraping. So for example, if we wanted to get all of the content that's inside of the P tags, all of that lorem ipsum text, we could create a new variable called content and inside there we can run query selector all and get all of the p tags and then we can actually just reduce that into a single string so if we grab an accumulator and grab the text property from each of those p tags that we've just extracted and then in this example we'll just add them together starting off with an empty string if we were to then log that out to the console we should just see all of that lorem ipsum text being repeated let's run it again oops and i just missed out these single quotes here so let's just add those in so now you can see in our output, we've got the heading level one tag, or at least the text from it. And then we've got all of the lorem ipsum text that has been taken out of all of the P tags that are on our document. So let's do one final example where we're going to grab the image from the document itself. So we'll create a new variable called image. And from our DOM, we'll just use another query selector. And at the moment, the image is just a standard image tag. But if we wanted to differentiate it, we could give it an ID or a class, for example. So let's give it a class of kitten. And in our page scrape code, when we're making our call to query selector, we can just pass in that class here in exactly the same way you would if you were doing this inside of a browser. So as I said, there are some things that you can't quite do that you would normally do in the browser. So for example, if you wanted to get the images source attribute, what you could do in the browser is simply say the image that you've selected just access its source property. But you'll notice in our autocomplete that we don't see that property. And if we were to run that code as well, you'll see we get undefined. So the node HTML parser won't actually parse things like that. But what we can do, because that attribute is actually there, we can call a function called get attribute and then just pass in the source property. So now this time you can see that the source attribute has been returned successfully. So if you're just scraping some static content from a static page, i.e. a page that's not been dynamically generated by JavaScript, then downloading the page via Axios and then parsing it in this way is probably the best approach and it's quite simple. But what if you've got some dynamically generated content on your page? Say for example, if we go back to our index page and add a script tag here, and inside that script tag, let's create a new element. So we'll say, let's create a new H2 element. And let's just give that heading level two element some content. And then we'll just make sure that element is actually added to the page. So we'll use a query selector and just select the heading level one tag that's already on the page. And then next to that, we'll insert the adjacent H2 element. And we'll just say after end H2. 
And if we save that, if we just go back to our browser for a second, you can see we've now got that heading level two element in there, which wasn't there before. And that's been dynamically added with our JavaScript code. So let's try and extract that with our HTML parser library. So let's just down here say uh, the heading level two is going to be equal to DOM query selector, and we'll just pass in H2. And then right at the end, let's actually just clear out some of this so we can see what's going on. And we'll say console.log heading level two dot text. So if we run that code again, we'd expect to actually see the new element that we've created on the page and its text should be dynamically created element. But when we actually run the code, you'll see we get an error saying we can't read the property text of null. So if we actually look at the heading level two tag that we've got there, the element that we've selected is actually null. And that's because the page that we've actually retrieved with Axios won't have that generated element already. So if we log the actual data out to the console just to see that in practice, you can see that the page actually has this script tag, but if we scroll up, the only element that we've got at the top of the page is the heading level one tag. And that's because Axios will do a good job of actually retrieving the HTML page, but it won't run any of the JavaScript on the page. So if you're thinking of trying to scrape a page that's made in React or Angular, or basically using any kind of JavaScript to generate elements on a page, then this approach is going to fail if you're trying to access anything that other than the static content on the page. So how do we solve this? Well, we actually need to use another library to actually generate a page that has all of the rendered JavaScript before we try and plug it into a DOM parser and then try and access the elements that have been created via JavaScript. So there are a few different options to do this, but probably the best one to use at this time is called Puppeteer. And what this actually does is runs a version of the Chromium browser in a headless mode. And then it actually loads that web page that you're requesting, parses all of the JavaScript inside it and returns the rendered page to you so that you can then do further processing in terms of parsing and scraping the document. So in our terminal, let's actually go ahead and install Puppeteer. So npm install Puppeteer. And when that's installed in our page scrape file, let's actually import that. So we'll say create a new variable called Puppeteer. That's just going to require the Puppeteer module. And we don't have any need for Axios in this example, so we can actually just get rid of that completely. So to use Puppeteer, it's simply a case of creating a new object, which is a reference to uh, that browser that we mentioned before. So with Puppeteer, we can actually just then say Puppeteer launch. And this returns a promise, so I'm just going to use the await keyword to make sure that gets stored into the variable browser. And then we can create a new instance of a page by saying uh, create a new variable called page. And this again is going to return a promise. So we'll say await browser and new page is the method that we want to call. So this will actually set up a new instance of Puppeteer via the Chromium browser and will create a new page or tab within that browser. And then we can simply say we're going to await the page.goto function, which as the name suggests is pointing that page to a particular URL. So the URL we want to send it to is what we were using before, which is localhost 3002. And um, we'll just say index.html to make sure we specify the page. And then in a similar way that we did with Axios, we want to get the actual data from that page, which is the rendered web page. So we can do that with a function that's available on the page object that we've created called evaluate. And I'm just going to create a new variable called data. And again, this returns a promise. So we'll await the result of that. So we'll say page evaluate. And this takes a function. And what we need to return from this function is the actual entirety of the document that's been generated. So we can say document.body.innerHTML. So here we're just extracting all of the HTML inside of our body tag from our rendered document and then saving it into the data variable. So the last thing we need to really do is just make sure that the browser tab is closed. Otherwise, the script will hang waiting for that tab to close. So we can just say await the browser to close. But if we run our code again, if you scroll up, you can see that the actual result that we're getting now is the rendered content. And we can tell that by the result that we're getting is we've actually got that h2 tag element in that data variable. So instead of just getting the static content, now we're actually getting the fully rendered page. So if now I actually go and try and render that heading level two tag, let's just uh, clear up all these bits and pieces here. We can should be able to now access its text content. 
which as you can see is the dynamically created element text that we set with our JavaScript code within our web page. So using this approach with Puppeteer, you can actually generate those rendered pages before you try and actually parse it with the HTML parser library. And Puppeteer actually offers a lot of other functions as well. You can take screenshots and make PDFs from your rendered pages. So let's have a look at how you do that. So to take a screenshot, we simply await the result of the page screenshot function, which takes a few options, but if you just pass in a path of the file name of where you want to actually store that screenshot, if we run the code again, you can see we've now got a PNG file, and if we open that up, you can see we've got the content on our page, even with the dynamically created content that's been generated via JavaScript. So to create a PDF, it's exactly the same, except we use a PDF function. So we can say page.pdf, and again, we pass it in a path. We can say site.pdf, and we'll run that again. Now you can see we've got a PDF file, which we, if we open that up in our browser, you can see is the exact same content again, even with the dynamically generated content via JavaScript, all saved up into a PDF for us. So as I mentioned, there are a lot of other things that you can do with Puppeteer as well, but hopefully you've seen enough to get you started in being able to scrape web pages and extract content using the Node HTML parser library. And then ultimately when you've got that data, you can do something with it with your project or application. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorial updates.